Welcome everyone, Denzel Rodriguez here, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. And today I have a special guest with me, a fellow Kingdom content creator. His name is Travis Peters. I'm gonna bring him up on the screen right now. Hello, my friend. Thank you for spending time with me and with my audience. It's really an honor and privilege to, to have you. I've been watching you since I wanna say 2019, 2020, like definitely before COVID, if I'm not mistaken, um, or during yeah. COVID. I can't remember which it was, but I, I remember watching when you had under four or 5,000 subscribers. And now yeah. you're, you know, you've really expanded, I think, you're in the mid late mid 50s or under under 40 right now or mid 40 something like that in that range yeah you're someone i've seen in the kingdom space right because there's there's christian content creators preach then and, and talk about the word or tell stories those are typically pastors or, or ministers things like that and then there's i want to say there's there's this world smaller world of these kingdom content creators where they're not necessarily a pastor although they may have some experience in that space but they really come from the business world and then they tied their faith and somehow very uniquely strategically figured out how to market that message to the world where where it's more receivable to the ones that are not saved, the ones that maybe are in other religions, the ones that really don't haven't spent a whole lot of time in scripture or the word. So sometimes the 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 church marketing content can immediately just turn people off. Just people are just not ready to receive that. For someone mm -hmm. like yourself or myself, it's like we're attacking a problem that we know they have, and you're able to really weave in God's grace the, the the good news the gospel the message uh where it hits them in a really unique way and so you're someone that you did it for me even though i'm already saved the believer uh, but i've just been able to watch that that growth i say okay this is interesting i like what he's doing got a community building things all right and then i'm over here young guy i'm building a financial coaching practice where i help people get out of debt and improve their finances. And I've really been doing that just from a, a logical perspective, even though I have this faith background and it really only opens up or, or comes out when the client ask hey how did you do this right mm. then i'm like oh yeah you just invited me to talk about jesus right i can i can bring him up um so i'm not typically like boom right in your face i try to also weave it into my message as well when i'm talking my audience doing my case studies so i'm really excited again to bring you in here because i want to discuss the the kingdom mindset how we develop this this mindset of a king what is a kingdom mindset how do we develop it and how does that help us overcome these money challenges these money blocks or money traumas right there's there's worldly language and then there's kingdom language and i want to see how these things kind of uh, uh, come in over each other and and intertwine to to receive a result that ultimately most of my audience and clients are, are looking for. And just to give you a little more context, you're talking to an audience of people that they want the details. They want the numbers, they want the facts, they want the proof, and there's someone that will they'll go and do it. You're talking to people who are in lots of debt. You're talking to people who are Christians, they're of the faith, and some maybe not so much or, or on their way there, right? Um, but they're mm -hmm. really focused on creating financial independence and freedom in their life, struggling as to how come these people are getting it really quickly. But when I try to do this strategy or, or, or run my numbers and it's like I, I just mess myself up or I'm, I'm, I'm having some blocks. So I wanna turn it to you if you wanna yeah. give, our, give my audience here just a little background about yourself and, and what you're doing on your channel and sure. the main things that you're really excited about uh, for today and just overall in your business. So appreciate it. Denzel, thanks for having me. You are, um, I'm, I'm sure you understand it and I'm sure you get it. I'm sure you know it to a degree, but what you're doing, especially at such a young age is it's awesome, man. So I'm, I'm impressed, um, with your, we're going to talk about this word in a minute with your diligence, with your work ethic, with your excellence and just your let's get after it mentality and helping people. So I appreciate you. You're doing great. Keep it up. Uh, I'm, happy to know you and I, and I appreciate you reaching out like it, it means a lot to me and your your words are super kind thank you very much my name is travis peters i teach what we call the increase method and we talk about living the increase life you see me here with a bible in front of me 
it is not for show. This is pretty much how I live. And on my desk, there are multiple Bibles and all kinds of stuff. I did not grow up in church. I think one of the things that brings my unique perspective or ability to teach this in a way that clicks for people yeah. is I don't have that typical pastor, preacher, look, feel, sound. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I didn't grow up with it. I'm just, I started going to church when I was 15. And then years and years later, once I started to really dive into this stuff, I was like, oh, God wants us to win. He, it's all throughout this book. It's just, these are just formulas on how to be successful. And then I was like, well, that makes sense. Because if we're going to go play on his team, so to speak, wear his jersey, I want to be on a winning team. You don't want to go play for the losing team. That's not attractive. I want to see the team that's winning. I want to go play over there. Here's the formulas and the frameworks on how to do that. You just follow these steps. And I started, when I started going to church, it was great because I started getting around people that were winning. I started getting around people who were older than me, who were happy, who were successful, who were making money. Obviously I wasn't married at the time, but I started hanging around people that were married and they were happily married in successful marriages. And I just started seeing this and I was like, this is awesome. I want to be around these people. They have confidence. They walked in a level of authority. They walked in a level of, uh, man, really just excited about life. You probably know this. That's somewhat rare, or at least it can be. I started getting around a bunch of people that were living that way. And I say, I want to go that direction as well. They started teaching me stuff in here. I started listening to uh, the pastor of my church who I have sat under for over 20 years now. And he is an amazing man of God who teaches us how to apply the word. And we, like I said, we fully believe that God wants us to win and be successful. And as we started applying these things, we'll cover some of them here in a little bit. There's, you'll see there's a lot of scriptures that teach on finances, that teach on financial success, business success. It talks about debt. It talks about all this stuff in here. Once I started realizing these weren't just good suggestions, but if I just do them, I get the result that they promise. Seems simple enough, right? <laughs> but we don't, we don't always do that. One of the things that you mentioned, a kingdom mindset. What we need to understand, and, and like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be Trav, and this is just how I talk and what I talk about. There's really two kingdoms. There's the earthly world kingdom, uh -huh. and then there's God's kingdom. And the, they're kind of like two different operating systems. Can look at it that way. You can go operate in the world's system, but the negatives are you're kind of on your own. Yeah. In the in the church speak, we say you're doing it in your own flesh or your own strength. The Bible talks about when you do that, there's toil attached to it. It's when people do stress about money and they worry themselves sick. It's when all of these negative side effects that come with money begin to happen. Uh, you miss out with time with your family, marriage issues, all that kind of stuff. When you're doing it on your own, it's like you're susceptible to those things. If you decide to do it God's way and in God's kingdom, Proverbs 10, 22 says something interesting. It tells you, it says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. So there's a lot of people who've gotten rich, but with a lot of sorrow attached. Yeah. And one of the things that's cool about some of these Bibles, like this is an amplified Bible. It'll, it'll tell you the definitions of some of these words. So the definition of that word sorrow, another translation says toiling. So toiling means painful and exhaustive labor mixed with grief, mixed with pain and mixed with sorrow. So that's one way you can get rich, exhaustive labor and toil mixed with pain, grief, and sorrow. You can work in the blessing of the Lord in his kingdom. And it says he makes rich without sorrow and without toil. Just to be clear, that doesn't mean we don't work and we don't work hard and we don't outwork people. Right. No, we show up and we crush it, mm -hmm. but we work from a place of rest in our hearts while we do that. You work from a place of peace while you go get after it and crush it. You work with God's blessing on your life and you still work and we're still gonna show up early and stay late and we're gonna get after it and we're gonna win and we're gonna succeed, but there won't be the sorrow, the pain, the toil, the grief that's attached to winning financially the world's way. And so that's what we do in the increased life is we teach this. I teach it on my YouTube channel. Uh, we do got a membership and some coaching stuff that we do. But this is the 
way, the way of living, so to speak, the way of being that we are teaching and training people and develop pe developing people in. It creates a great life. I highly recommend it. Yeah, I, I do too. And with that, I'm going to narrow it and really focus on our Christian brothers and sisters that are watching this on my YouTube channel, right? There are some belief systems in the body of Christ seems to be coming from the body of Christ within people who are operating in there, leaders, certain leaders sure. that maybe have some kind of a world view. And for whatever reason, uh, I've struggled with understanding it when I hang out with other, other Christians and I, and I hear what they're struggling on or I'm on a coaching call with someone that I know is a believer. They're saved, they're sanctified, they're justified, they know their scripture. And versus I can talk to a Hindu or a Muslim that not know anything about Jesus or even just a just a an everyday person and they don't have this belief system and yeah. they're able to experience a result that this Christian is after, yeah. which is, which is the idea of being on the winning team, which you mentioned earlier. There is a thought process I have seen in the church where we, we believe that our win occurs after death, mm. go to heaven, eternal life and and while on earth there's toil there's exhaustion there's hard labor there's pain because of adam and eve eating the apple sinning and da -da -da, and 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 so many generations of, of pain and it's a bit confusing because i thought i i believe that yeah. that god came in human form jesus and and paved the way to come back into the garden uh where we don't have to quote unquote, um, experience this hard labor exhaustion that comes with sorrow, pain, grief, and kind of like you're on your own. Um, or even this belief of, hey, you know, you just gotta, you know, pull through, hang on, stay broke, stay poor, we'll win in the end. We don't win here. Right. We went after a, a very popular preacher said this. I forgot his name. He's on YouTube. Older guy, I think, in, in California. And he was like, it, it was like the, the crowd was excited. You know, he was like, hey, guys, don't you remember? Like, we don't win here. Mm. We we win when we die. We, we win in heaven, right? And it's like, I don't know, pastor, it's a nice suit. Tailor made, I believe. Um, you look like you're winning, you know? Like you get to say that and then the, the people in the pews um, just don't yeah. experience that same lifestyle. Uh, so please touch on on that right there is, is the idea of being on the winning team while living, right? Even though sure. a fallen world. Yeah, this is a great question. And you're right. It, it's, it's super unfortunate that um, that is a, a belief system that a lot of Christians have. I'm going to set the record straight. It is incorrect. We are, and here's, here's actually like the super easy answer for you guys. So Jesus died on the cross so that we could be saved. Okay. Yeah. The two words that ours now that the Bible uses is that we are saved and we have salvation. The root word of both of those is this Greek word sozo. So back when the Bible was originally written, it basically says Jesus died on the cross so that you can be sozoed, so that you can be saved. Uh, the original word for salvation, I believe, is soteria. And they mean almost the same thing. And the original word first, or the root word of soteria is the sozo word. So sozo, what it actually means is you are saved in every sense of the form, in every sense of the word here and later. So it includes, it includes deliverance. It includes prosperity. It includes all the great things that we believe are going to happen in heaven. It says you actually have them now. What we've allowed to happen is that word salvation to be watered down to basically mean it's going to be great later. That's not incorrect. It's just incomplete. Salvation is a successful life, a prosperous life, a healthy life, a happy life, a delivered life, delivered from sin, delivered from your addictions, delivered from whatever now. And by not understanding that definition, we just, in our minds, we don't grab that life, even though God made it available to us. Mm -hmm. The book of Romans explains this and lays it out very clearly. When you have the correct definitions of salvation and saved, you go reread the book of Romans or really a lot of these books, but go read Romans 
And you'll see it very clearly that, oh, it means I get to live the greatest life imaginable. Well, and think about it. We have an enemy. There is the devil. His whole goal is to get you to not become all that God created you to be. His whole goal is to live a suppressed life so that you can't really do any damage to his kingdom. Right. If we leave a suppressed and now, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't do anything, if you're ineffective and you just think I'm going to life's going to be great later when I'm dead. Can I, can I be real with your audience for a sec? Be real. Can they, can they handle it? I believe so. <laughs> God, he doesn't need you. Uh-oh. It'll be great when we get there. Uh Oh, he needs you doing stuff on earth for him. Mm. You've heard that corny phrase, right? We're the hands and the feet of Jesus, but it's for real. You've got, if you're watching this, most of you guys watching this, you've got a dream. You got something in the, in the back of your mind. It's been in your heart for a while. Something you think on. A lot of people, it's writing a book. A lot of people, it's starting a business. A lot of people, maybe it's a ministry. Maybe it's something like that. Do you have this thing? And what we forget is, wait, this is how God operates. God doesn't write books. And actually, he can't write books. He actually can't start businesses. But you can. And we start to think like this, like, wait, he's given me the ideas for these books, for these businesses, this YouTube channel, this podcast, this ministry this whatever it is that's him getting stuff to you so that you can go create it so that you can live with a kingdom mindset you can go and you can dominate i mean you guys realize this if you go back to the original command that god gave us in genesis 128 this is when he looked at man he blessed them that word blessed means he empowered them to prosper so he gave you the ability to prosper you've got the, you've got the power to do it the ability to do it you've been blessed and then he said be fruitful go produce something we we, we think this set of scriptures just means have babies and stuff that's not that's not all that it means mm-hmm. it says be fruitful go produce something multiply man let's let's go and multiply this message i don't know why there's balloons yeah on my screen. <laughs> Pretty interesting. Uh, I think you I might didn't be setting there. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but it feels cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, then it says, go fill the earth. Well, what that means is, hey, that thing you're producing, let's go help as many people as possible. And then the next command he gives us is subdue and dominate. That's a kingdom life. That's literally the first marching orders that God gave us. So when we think we're here to lose until we die, ineffective for the kingdom. If we're supposed to be Christians and expanding his kingdom, but all we're doing is surviving, eking it out until the great by and by, it's like, what's the point? And what would be the one or two steps uh, someone could take to start re- rebuking that idea, rejecting that that belief system that one could argue is, is you can go as far as saying that is completely satanic, false doctrine, right? You can, you can go as far as saying that, uh, but what would be maybe either, like you said, rereading the book of Romans. So there's practical reading that we can do from this yeah. new way of potentially thinking without us imposing a view on you, but you'd be able to just kind of like unbiasedly look at this text without your um, religious uh, beliefs or what we've been preached on for so many years. But yeah, like one or two things that like, okay, start here <laughs> Yeah, uh, to start and, and, that idea. And so here's what's, you know, what's, what's funny about it is this is not, I'm not trying to come over and be like some radical belief guy. Like I said, I didn't grow up in church. I just started seeing people winning and thought that looks attractive. And then they were like, hey, if you read the Bible, it tells you how to do it. So I just started reading the Bible and I was like, yep, sure enough, it's all in here. Mm -hmm. So I'm not coming up, I'm not trying to come across as like some dude out of left field. I'm just like, I I guess in a way, um, I didn't have anything to unlearn. I didn't have any uh, religious stuff to, to unlearn. I just got to learn from what the book said. Same here. And, Mm -hmm. and it's, well, yeah, and, and look at your life. You're winning. Imagine that. Yeah. So like Romans 5, 17 is a good one. And again, this this Bible I got in front of me is, is the Amplified Bible. Okay. But what it's talking about here is when Adam sinned, sin came into the whole world. But when Jesus died on the cross and rose again, righteousness came into the whole world. It made available to everybody. So all that means is you are in right standing with God right now. The reason a lot of Christians have money hangups is they don't actually know that or believe that. And what they do is they think that their financial situation is a consequence for something they've done wrong, something they've screwed up. I haven't been a good steward. And so I'm paying the price for my bad performance, which is not scriptural it is not scriptural that's not how it works so romans 5 17 like i said he's just talking that 
because of Jesus, one man's obedience, everybody has access to salvation now, if you accept him as your Lord and Savior. And it goes on to say that through this one man, we can reign as kings in this life through Jesus Christ. I can reign as a king in this life, this not life. as a beggar, this life. Yeah. yeah, the Bible is full of this. If you come at it from this perspective of God's got my back, God wants me to win, he's equipped me with everything I need to win. All right, God, now what's my marching orders? Where do you want me to go win? That's how I operate. I feel like we've been equipped for everything. You guys, you've heard the you know the saying, we're, we're in the Lord's army, right? Mm -hmm. Well. If that's true, and the, and the Bible does say that we are citizens of heaven. So the way I look at it is I've been deployed like a soldier. Let's just say uh, the Bible says we can we can have a 120 year lifespan. Um, for sake of conversation, we'll say I got 100 years, 1984 to 2084. Okay, what am I going to do with my deployment? What am I going to do while I'm down here? God's equipped me, right? You're in someone's army. You're equipped with everything you need to be successful. You're equipped with the finances you need. You're equipped with the weapons you need. You're equipped with the, all the stuff and he pays for it. Okay, I'm equipped. Let's go. Let's roll. What are we doing, Lord? What's my marching orders? And he's up there, man, I already told you, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue, dominate. Let's get after it. Let's expand this kingdom. Mm -hmm. And you'll find things that are on your heart. You've got, you've got those, those ideas. You already know what you want to do. Most of you haven't given yourself permission to do them. The thing with money, the thing that we have to be careful about is there's this spirit of mammon attached to it. Talks about this. Jesus teaches this in Matthew 6, 24. And basically what he says is, man, it's an opposing spirit. It's trying to get you to take orders from it. And it says you can't serve both masters. So money's gonna try to be a master. God's gonna try to be your master, but you ultimately pick which one you'll serve. And serve just means take orders from. Which one will you take orders from? So here's, um, here's I would love to interject here, because this is something I would like some clarity on for myself, is yeah. that topic of the spirit of mammon. So you're saying there's a spirit, an opposing force to, to God's will over the resource we call money right now is is that satan the devil um or or is it separate from him one of his one of his crew mm -hmm. operating kind of took over that system of, of of money i would love to get some clarity there i think that's going to really help some christians kind of break free because you yeah you know, I'll, I'll lead to the second thing i was going to bring up i don't want to forget it but you did bring up a cultural sensitivity as it relates to curses uh or people well, Christians say I'm cursed because dad and my father's father and mm. and now I'm experiencing I and I would say maybe there's some level of truth to this. I, I me being a Puerto Rican Colombian and I know in the black community you hear this spoken more than mm. than when I talk to Koreans or Asians. Um, you just don't hear that. Uh, even some white folks uh, clients I have, and even even Indians. Like there's certain cultures that I hear it predominantly expressed more. Like oh, there's a family curse. Definitely hear that in the Spanish community. Definitely hear that in the black community. And I've even been in church where where it's some pastors touch on curses like in the bible even god you know cursing that generation da, 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 you know cursing like okay maybe there's some definitely some scripture here but was god talking to you or was he talking to a specific group at a specific time giving a, pres mm -hmm. a specific prescription like let's i want i want to draw that distinction there so that that's later but okay. the first part Remind about the yeah the first part <laughs> the first part the spirit of mammon is that satan controlling yeah. that uh, you know did he deliver his crew, uh, a crew member to take over that department of, of mammon what, what's going on there yeah well so it, it it talks about if you look up that word mammon it's got a couple definitions and it says the first one is and this is so powerful riches personified as opposed to god so i i picture a a, a man dressed like money riches personified in the form of a person and opposed to god now I believe Satan is behind all of this. Absolutely. Okay. Maybe it is one of the crew, but we know that it originates from him. The other definition is here in the Amplified Bible. It tells you that money is, or mammon is deceitful riches. It can be money. It can be possessions. It can be whatever is trusted in. And then another translation says, whatever is valued more than God. I think most of us watching this would say, I don't do that. I don't serve money. I don't value money more than God. Mm -hmm. Yet, I think our words and our actions might say otherwise. otherwise. 
Uh mentally serve the Lord. But if I was to offer you a $500,000 job, but you had to move to Tulsa and you had to uproot your family from your church and your kids from their schools and your wife, your spouse from her friends and her family, and you were, you know, teaching the Sunday school over there and you were volunteering and you plugged in and you had a life, but you moved for a paycheck and you got over here, even though God had you planted at that church and that location and that group, you moved over here, but oh, perhaps it's such a great opportunity though. Mm-hmm. I had to take it. Yeah. W- w- without even consulting the father before making that, before saying yes to that opportunity, we didn't even exactly. consult with, with the father first. We immediately, you know, jumped on it. And next thing you know, your kids don't have any friends. You're looking for a church. You were plugged in. Now you don't really find one that fits, right? I've, I've seen this play out many, many times. Yeah. And a lot of times they move back. A lot of times they fall away. It's things like this. That's a, maybe an extreme example. Some of you guys have experienced. It's things like this where it's like, wait, I'm taking orders from money all the time. I knew in my heart when I prayed, I was supposed to do this decision, but I took this job because it paid more or i bought this thing because it was cheaper though this is the one i really wanted my spouse wanted this vacation but i could save some money if i took us on this vacation all day long we're making money led decisions and i can keep going the gas you put in your car you go to the restaurant you want the steak but the chicken is 15 bucks cheaper so you get the chicken right Mm -hmm. you get the off-brand oreos even though they taste disgusting right We, we do this stuff all the time and we have to become more aware of it it's why a lot of us have hang-ups that we shouldn't have is we're just not doing what the book said to do so you can win here you can win now and after that's like that's the 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 premise here through operating through operating in god's kingdom rather than the world then we move into serving one master understanding that as much as we claim with our mouths and our thoughts that that we love and serve God, and no one's no one's attacking that here, right? We we I always let my audience know that I was like I'm not attacking your faith about your belief in God. It's your it's your body, your actions that are doing a different thing. And and when you review what you just made about that decision, I bet you feel bad about it, or you're like praying over it. God, I hope this works out. God, please mm-hmm. make this work. And it's like, well, you didn't consult with him in the first place of that major financial decision or even yeah. or even your daily financial decisions. And I think a great place logically here, if I might want to jack, interject here on myself, is, is I say, look, um, let's start small. Like, what are some small things that we can consult with the Father on? Yeah. Uh, whether it's the gas you choose to put in, um, the subscription you choose to enroll in, the restaurant you choose to go to. Like, what if yeah. you just started practicing little there? Hey, God, where would you like me to go to dinner tonight? You want me to cook in? You want me to go out? What would you prefer? Dude, that, Something that, simple. Yeah. <laughs> I like, I do that stuff. I do that stuff. So, yeah. like, Matthew 6 24 is where we were just reading about mammon. What's cool is if you guys read, if y'all watching this want to read from Matthew, 6 19 through 34 he's talking the whole thing is about money money worries worrying about necessities worrying about these types of things and what's cool is when you get to verse 33 he kind of touches on this and he says look instead of being worried about all the stuff in life how are you going to pay your bills he says don't do that one he says don't worry don't worry saying how am i going to pay my bills how am i going to do this what are we going to do how's it going to happen he just says hey seek the kingdom of god first and it tells you in here that that's his way of doing things and his way of being right so if you seek the kingdom first what do you want me to do here i'm coming to you first what is your way of doing things it says he will add all that other stuff you're worried about he'll just add it to you he'll just give he'll just get you that stuff instead of worrying about the stuff just go to god get your strategy execute the strategy He'll supply you. It keeps you out of worry. It keeps you out of all of that anxiety and all of that junk that goes with it. Man, we can truly live a carefree life by following this method here. Just so in case anybody's wondering, this does not mean you won't make a ton of money. Correct. (laughs) You can be wildly successful and wealthy and prosperous and abundant living for the Lord. In fact, it's the best way to do it. It's like the scripture we started with, that Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich 
and he adds no sorrow with it. Mm -hmm. Let's just do that. So to answer your question, I think that's a great idea. Hey God, where should we go on date night tonight with my spouse? Hey, what should we do here? Hey, I just asking them these questions. Proverbs 3, 5 and 3, 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge and recognize him and he will make straight and plain your paths. Meaning he'll just direct your paths. He'll show you which one to take. So in all your ways, acknowledge him, recognize him. He's, he's here to help you. That's yeah. the best part. Big time. Okay, so now sticking with the Christians here that are that are having these money blocks and these these uh, long lasting belief systems that they got in the church and and are now believing. So we're we're removing and we're breaking through the idea that Christians don't win on planet Earth; that we mm -hmm. win after we die. Okay, once we know that, great. Now it's okay as it relates specifically to the area of your finances, which is a big part of your life. Like 95% of your decisions are, are financially led. So if we can attack the big elephant in the room, I'm pretty sure a lot of these other areas are just gonna kind of fall in line. Um, so operating in God's kingdom is a is a template format. Uh, seeking the kingdom first is, is like the kingdom template to begin with. Then it's understanding you're here to win now. You can win, you have the ability to win here, now, and after. In order to do that, we have to just serve one master. Okay, so we went through that, that there's a, there's a spirit of mammon, of money, and, it, and it's, it's the spirit over money that is the evil one, which if you begin to love money, you'll commit all sorts of evil. You have the ability, you, you, you have the creativity to commit all oh, sorts of, there. right. Yeah. You, you open up Pandora's box there essentially. So if we're a master over the money and we serve one master that gives us the tools, resources, knowledge, and wisdom to now leverage this tool that he gave us, he put it in the garden. Gold was there prior to any transactions being occurred. Um, it's not so, bad. You know, that, that has to deal with like showing that, okay, God is operating in abundance and there's mm -hmm. provision and many mm -hmm. other elements that that comes with concept of a kingdom man or woman being rich in the literal sense rich right and you yes. did touch on there's literal riches that we do have the ability to access by being diligent and this is something you covered in one of your videos recently just touching on the the idea of of diligence so yeah. serving one master and then so now there's this there's this other major block, the word prosperity, is a major mm. block in the body of Christ where the moment anyone touches starts to wander in the realm of positive thinking, positive attitudes, gratitude, ways of being and, and, and abundance and prosperity, you're, you're then someone like you, I, I'm pretty sure you get this, you're immediately <laughs> thrown into prosperity teaching prosperity gospel uh, uh you're thrown you're lumped into that category of you know tithe here and all these blessings are gonna occur you know and all this all this weird stuff and i'm pretty sure without a doubt there is in the body of christ in the church community there are those preachers that do that for sure because they're trying to feed them their own selves by manipulating scripture but what Probably. about what but what about the actual word itself as it relates to yeah. prosperity the kingdom citizen here on planet earth although everyone may not experience becoming a multimillionaire multi-billionaire or even trillionaire so many years mm -hmm. from now right we're going to we I think we're going to experience our first trillionaire soon in the next couple of years can can we now break this other belief system of the prosperity the idea of prosperity and how Christians really wrestle with that. Because even when we get it, and this is something I experienced, when I started winning at such a young age, very early on, and money started coming in very fast, all of a sudden, this, this guilt uh, mm -hmm. started to creep in like, wait a minute, I'm a child of God and I'm, and I'm, and I'm of the faith and, and should I really have all this money? You know, I don't really need it. Uh, I know how to live off 30, 40, 50 grand a year. And now I'm bringing in two, three, 400 grand on average. And it's coming like nothing. And it's so easy. And I have all this money left over. Should I just like, just, just, just depart from it, give it away. I don't want it to make me evil. So yeah. I had to wrestle with that for a couple of years. And that was during COVID. COVID, I had my biggest year. And I was like, I literally stopped taking clients for a period of time because I had to work my thinking here because I knew it was getting 
there was it was there was an attack occurring and it didn't come from non-believers it didn't come from uh, any one of my clients that were cheering me on like oh my god you're doing amazing this is awesome it came from going to church hearing certain stuff and and sharing what 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 i was feeling and then it was almost like i was doing something wrong you know right uh so that's the next block here as we go yeah. through this system here that i would like to release if you have something to say on there if i have something to say how much time you get <laughs> i'm glad you asked Open okay up. so let's let's look at it for what it is the bible has a scripture that talks about a house divided against itself can't stand this is how the enemy will operate he wants to create division so if he can get other christians telling you what's happening is bad and that maybe you should feel guilty well he's thrilled because he doesn't have to do a lot of work he just gets a house divided against itself. Mm -hmm. And so he can get that division created through silly things like this. Here's what, here's the, 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 the simple solution to all of this is would you just go read the Bible for yourself and get the understanding yourself? So what happens is we'll hear a preacher, we'll hear somebody, because like I say this in my stuff all the time. I'm like, don't take my word for it. Go read it for yourself. Here's my notes. Go check it out. It's these scriptures. I'm always trying to get people to go get it for themselves. Because when you understand it for yourself, those guilt thoughts and those those things are actually counterfeits. They're actually false. They're actually not aligned with the truth. But if you know the truth, one, you'll be set free. But then also you can recognize the counterfeit pretty easily when it comes. One of the one of the names that the devil is given is the accuser of the brethren. So this is a good clue right here. Whenever you're feeling guilty around money or having too much of it, you're going to hear those things like you're being selfish. Yeah. You're being greedy right now. You don't need that much. Who do you think you are? Don't you remember where you came from? Well, what's happening? That voice is accusing you. Those are accusatory thoughts. So you can stop right there and be like, oh, that's not from God. He doesn't do that. That's the nature of the enemy. Okay. Oh, okay. He's accusing me of of greed and guilt doesn't come from God. Those aren't his characteristics. Those aren't his nature. That's not his parenting style. The way that this stuff comes from God, he does correct us, but he corrects us through his word. So you can read a scripture and you could say, oh, here's where I'm off. It says right here, I need to make this adjustment. It is not through God accusing you, condemning you, or trying to make you feel guilty. That's the enemy's voice, but we give God the credit. And that's what confuses most Christians. That's what hangs up most Christians. They start moving towards success. The enemy puts a rock in their shoe and they think it's God. And that's, well, I'm just going to short circuit then. If I think having a lot of money, here's something you mentioned, will make me evil. Well, then I'm not going to have a lot of money. You're going to self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. And I think when you say money blocks, this is usually what's happening is a Christian who's, who loves God, but they think that money is going to turn them into something that they're not. So I'm not going to go down that path because I'm a morally good person. So let me self-sabotage. Man, they'll start making less sales calls. They'll stop trying as hard. They'll have all these excuses and reasoning. They'll stop working as much. They'll pull back. They'll do all kinds of stuff, not realizing that's actually what they're doing is they're self-sabotaging their own success because they're actually afraid that if I get there, man, God could get mad at me mm -hmm. or I could become greedy. One of those guys. And we fear criticism. There's a, there's a, there's a book called outwitting the devil by Napoleon Hill that I like. And it, the devil outlines his major six major fears that he uses to control people. And one of the main ones is the fear of criticism. Man, if I do that, what will people think? Man, in, in the world, if I make a lot of money and brag about it, it's awesome. In some church worlds, you make a lot of money you're looked at weird. Yeah. And it starts, well, what, what shady thing did you do to make that money? What sketchy thing did you do? And I'll, a, um, this is kind of just a fun, it's not actually, it's not fun, but a side note is, uh, I read an article, it was in Forbes, I believe. And it talked about how since the 1960s, almost every single bad guy in a movie, action, even rom-com, it doesn't really matter, cartoons, almost every single bad guy is a, evil, wealthy, greedy, and selfish person. Yeah. And so subconsciously, we've been spending the last 25 years of our lives more and more watching these movies and shows, subconsciously being implanted the seed that, hey, if you get money, you'll be like that guy. 
You'll step on people's backs. You won't have a family. You'll ruin all your relationships. You'll right. be greedy and immoral. You're and make this. You'll be a sociopath. Yeah you know all these different things and it's like okay oh, yeah. now you're living in a world that's producing the wrong heroes right so our hero making machine is really bad right yeah. we're, we're, we're uh we're praising complainers rather than doers right uh so well, there's that exactly. as well back to the book abraham god made him extremely wealthy yeah. in silver gold cattle livestock he was so wealthy that the king was like, please move. You're bigger than me. <laughs> His son, Isaac, same thing. And when you, when, you, when you read this out in Genesis, it's kind of what we talked about. They went to God, got their strategy. God prospered them. Simple. That's it. Now that word prosperity, here's where we have to be careful. Careful. Uh, yeah. It is, and, and, and this is something adamant that I'm adamant about. Don't let that word be gross to you. It's not a gross word. In fact, we should honor that word because God picked it to be put in his book. Yeah. And it would be just like Satan to try to talk you out of the power of that word and to make you think it's gross, to make you think it's sketchy or weird or icky or whatever feeling word you want to put to negative. Prosperity is not a negative. I've got the definition. Can I read the definition to you? Please. To advance or gain in anything good or desirable, successful progress in any business or enterprise, attainment of the object desired, like a goal. That's the main definition. To advance or progress in any good or desirable thing. Mm -hmm. Does that sound gross to anybody? Is that? Is and then we look here at Psalms 35, 27. He says this, let them shout for joy and be glad, saying continually, let the Lord be magnified who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. What's the problem here? If God takes pleasure in us advancing, getting ahead, uh -huh. obtaining things that are good and desirable, and you want to be anti-prosperity, it's like, what? you want to go back to just the losers club again? Like, what are we doing? Right, right, right. Anti-prosperity, that is a thing within the body here. So again, focusing on those that are watching my channel, my audience, my, my clients, my longtime viewers, they're Christians, your believers, whatever doctrine you believe in God, Jesus, the whole thing, salvation, you're saved. And yet you've got this icky feeling around money and prosperity. And we've got to redefine these these words or else our belief system is going to block us from receiving yeah. what it is you ultimately are desiring. As a kingdom citizen, you've been planted with desires. God put desires in us. And I think that's another icky word, desire. That sometimes it's like, I don't want no desires, you know, like uh, I'm, you know, I have to be this way and kind of walk like on, on eggshells as a Christian. I'm like, no, if, mm -hmm. if I'm going to serve you, God, I'm not walking on eggshells. Can I just read the, like, it's literally on the next page, a scripture that talks about that. Can I just read it to you real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Psalms 37, 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires and secret petitions of your heart. Mm. Goes on, the next verse, commit your way to the Lord, trust in, lean on, rely on him, be confident in him, and he will bring it to pass. All right, let me recap. Let me recap on the whiteboard here real quick for you guys. So operating in God's kingdom for a kingdom mindset, you're winning here now and after, we serve one master, prosperity is available. It's not a bad word. We must be aware of the accuser. I think I spelled that right, accuser. So beware of the accuser, which then leads us to this next layer that a lot of Christians uh, need a break from, that it's either coming from their religion or tradition or their uh, nationality, their you know background, whether they're Spanish, black, white, Korean, you name it. There's some cultural beliefs that need to be let go, I think, in order to really fully operate as a king, as a queen in God's mm -hmm. kingdom, because this is a new culture, kingdom culture, kingdom mindset. Like that's a new, yeah. you're a whole new creature. So you can argue, you can say if they were, you know, when they ask you, what's your race, what's your nationality? Like if, if kingdom was an option, I'd select it, right? Because that's yeah. a whole yeah. culture in and of itself. So I'd like you to talk to that a little bit because you brought it up earlier. And in, a, in a t an environment like this, where there's not just the election occurring this year in our country, but if I'm not mistaken, there's like so many other countries right now that are 
going through an election change. So there's a lot of elections going on all over the world. It's really, really unique, interesting kind of a, a timing. So you've got worldly cultures and beliefs that you're 24 seven as a Christian, as a, as a kingdom citizen, you're in it. Whether we like it or not, it's showing up on your phones, your television, your social media apps, you name it. There's a, a section of the body of Christ that wants to go hide in the woods, get away from the world, and that's just, I don't see how that's duplicatable long-term. Really, at some point, all areas of the earth are going to be filled with, with people, right? If we really, you know, think about it. So I don't think that's a good, sustainable, long-term, duplicatable strategy to just go live out in the woods and deconnect, disconnect from the whole world and social media and all this stuff. Although there's a time and place for rest, right? And, and to pull back when needed, obviously, yes. As it relates to finances and as it relates to the word of God, there are some stories, whether it's God speaking to a specific group or a specific person doing a specific thing, which then causes a curse to occur in their bloodline. I think that happened with David. If I'm not mistaken, King David was was cursed when he did what he did and it affected the, the future generations. If I'm not mistaken, could be wrong about that. But could you talk to really that belief yeah. when you, because I know you have coached a lot of people or even in your community, someone believes that they have a curse in their family and because of that curse, they now can't go and do this thing that, that uh, God called them to. Or maybe they just have a, a desire that they haven't yet consulted with the father about, whether it's, I want to start this business, I want to make money, I want to invest in real estate, I want to do this, da-da-da, and create freedom, but I got this curse from my parents. Right. Parents, parents. So here's how I look at it. We, we go back to, I, I look at things very black and white. I look at things either from God or from Satan, from the enemy. That's how I That's how I look at it. It's It's been great decision-making parameters for me. It's really helped because when you come up to something that can seem a little bit confusing, or if gray. I just put it that filter, yeah. to me, it's, it's easy to see what's actually playing out. In the New Testament, the new covenant is what the New Testament means. The new covenant, the operating agreement that he has, that we have with God, is that he sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross to break the curse from us. So we are free from what, what what the Bible calls the curse of the law, which was the old covenant, the old operating agreement. Jews and Gentiles. Same thing. Like we're all teamed all up locked now. in. All right. So, yep. okay, so know, original plan that world. <laughs> just the Jews would have salvation. And then the Gentiles, Gentile just means a non-Jew. Right. Now salvation is avail available to all of us. And of back us. to the original or beginning of our interview. Salvation means all the great things The deliverance is one of the words that's included in salvation. I am delivered from the curse of the law. I'm delivered from the power of sin and death. I'm delivered. So I believe that would include any type of curse that you might think would be on you and your family. Here's what I really, really think though. It's kind of like anything else we've talked about here today is what we're really doing is dissecting belief systems, belief habits, belief patterns. It's what we actually believe. What you actually believe will always manifest itself in your actions. It's actually actions. Belief is actually actions. So if you believe your family is cursed, you start to speak a curse over your life. You claim it like an identity. You believe it. You claim it like there's nothing you can do about it. And then your actions line up with that. And then your results do too. I think when someone says a generational curse, I think that's what's really happening. It's not God cursing you god does god's not in the cursing business okay he didn't participate in that there was even there's even a story where a, a blind kid comes up to jesus jesus heals him and someone asks him hey is he blind because of what his parents did or what his grandparents did and she's like no here come here let me show you and he just heals the kid so it's it's things like this where it's like okay your parents screwed up your grandparents screwed up your great 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 grandparents screwed up whatever but you mentioned the scripture earlier, 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says that 
Old things have passed away. All things have become new. You are a new creation in Christ. Your slate is wiped clean. Yeah. God's looking at you and he wants, he's got marching orders for you. He's got instructions for you. He's got stuff for you to carry out, stuff for you to do. I like how you've been saying, consult with the father. You go consult with the father and do whatever he tells you to do. And it's going to work. It's going to prosper. Your business will prosper. Your finances will prosper. And prosper is not bad because we just read the definition of it. Right. It's to advance or gain or obtain anything desirable. One of the Great. things, one of the things that was very, very freeing for me is, is knowing that I have that ability to have a session with God, like a coaching session, a consultation, a, a counseling. Um, well, that was one piece. The second is as it relates to becoming a new creature. And on top, of, I don't know if it's in that same uh, uh, in Corinthians as well, but God forgets your sins completely. Um, oh yeah, I forgot many how times that's worded. So that's, it's like, so he literally he like he several can't times. Remember. Yeah, it's not yeah. stored in a database. So which which gives me this really like just empowering mindset moving forward that yes, I came from this environment. Yes, I came from single mom, blah, blah, blah. You know, these problems, this, they said this about money. Being Puerto Rican, we just like welfare paychecks and, you know, hearing certain cultural things, you know, Puerto Ricans are lazy and we show up late and, you know, we just want to drink coquito and dance and have fun and which is all fun, you know, obviously great things but can have these, these um, effects, these long-term effects. And knowing that, wait, God's gonna forget all that about me now that I'm choosing to serve him. So I don't have to hold on to it anymore either. Okay, but what about, and, and so we, we do this, what about, or. Yeah. Da, 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 and and it, so to your point, it is black and white for the person that's watching and say, well, Travis, you don't know my story. Or Denzel, well, you're not this you're not of this culture you weren't you know my parents parents were enslaved and and passed on some genetic code throughout the the generations and i'm pretty sure we could probably find some truth in some of these things but i would say it's some truth it's half truth it's not whole truth and and we literally can rewrite our bodies um this is something i learned from my uh functional medicine doctor recently he was saying every seven years or Every seven or eight years, you literally become a new person. You could make the argument because all of your previous um, cells or atoms are rotating. So they, they die and create new ones. Um, and so the person that chooses to change their dieting, change the foods they decide to put into their body, you literally can become like physically new renewed. Uh, and so all those toxins that were inside of you eventually through time, and diligence back to your you know point at your your whole body gets literally repaired and it's amazing that god crafted it in in that way that we go through these seasons of of renewing re, or daily renewing of the mind that was very freeing just to kind of add to your your point here about you know just breaking free from these cultural beliefs you see it black and white and it's it's god's way it's satan's way and you're you're approaching god with this mindset and you're backing it up with his word uh, you, you're very fast with, you know, going right to the specific scriptures as we're talking. You're like, oh, Denzel, what you just said is actually right here. I'm like there, but I'm really happy you're kind of guiding it in, in that way. So it's like, I'm not just coming up with stuff. Rather, you're, you're, as you're talking, you're bringing the word into it and you're giving my audience, here's where it's at. And then if you want to take an even deeper Bible study, look at the original way it was written in, in Hebrew and uh, uh, translate it back to English and see where those words are actually coming from. And you'd be amazed how, how the word, you know, money or prosperity or the word rich, um, how in today's environment have these negative connotations. But when God originally used the word rich, he used it on Abram. And it was, it was meant for a, a good thing that he was, he was very rich, as you mentioned. So, well, and, and a lot of what we're doing is we're actually not redefining I, in a way, we're redefining this stuff, but we're actually just getting back to what it actually means. The original. Getting, <laughs> yeah, just, this is just the original, original definitions. Uh -huh. The, the enemy is going to come in, like we said, and he's going to bring, the enemy always brings confusion. Yeah. So if there's something that we're confused around, this is how I think. I'm like, okay, this is obvious. People are confused on this because they're saying being poor is good, but then they're also praying for finances to pay their bills. But then also 
poor is good, but then we're commanded to help the poor. But if we helped them, then they wouldn't be poor anymore. Then that wouldn't be, wait, what? And he starts to short circuit. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why, that's why people, Christians have money hangups. If they just go, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but like, if you go read this thing, you'd see it's <laughs> none of those things. Yeah. Um, salvation. We know what it means now. Prosperity. We know what it means now. A big one that hangs people up is this word condemnation. And Romans 8, 1 says there's no condemnation in Christ. So I used to think that meant, oh yeah, I'm not condemned to hell anymore, but that's not what the word means. Not incorrect, but that's incomplete. Okay. I was just about to ask. I was like, wait, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. So condemnation is that feeling of you deserve a punishment. I'm getting what I deserve right now. It means deemed or declared. One of the root words of, uh, in, in that word is one of the root words from judgment as well, judgment. And it talks about walking around in a pageant with the judges always watching you looking for imperfections. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. When we feel condemned, that's not from Christ because there is no condemnation in Christ. One translation says it is impossible for the two to exist together. So if you are in Christ, you cannot feel condemned. You cannot feel to be made, to be felt guilty. Man, you deserve this. Look what you've done or look what your parents did. You're walking in that now. That's why this bad thing is happening. You feel declared guilty. Like I've been sentenced to a punishment. This is condemnation. And so the enemy is always going to bring up your old stuff to say, look what you did. That's why you're getting this right now. And you think it's God, but it's not. Or we just let those th- those thoughts come in and we don't identify the source. We don't take a minute to be like, wait, is that God or is that the enemy? We just hear it, think it, feel it. These are not new definitions. These are the original definitions. We just didn't know what they meant. We never took the time to go. And yeah. now that we have, it's like, oh man, this life is, this is freeing. Those stuff that held us back shouldn't be holding us back. These these weird guilts and hangups, those aren't from the Father. I'm going to reject them. I'm going to refuse them. When they come in, I'm going to say, nope, I'm not going to think on that. There's a scripture in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 that says, take all of your thoughts captive and teach them to obey Christ. So these thoughts come in. I teach them to obey Christ by saying, that's not what the scripture says. The scripture says there's no condemnation. The scripture saying that guilt doesn't come from God. So if I'm feeling those things, I'm rejecting that right now. And I'll say it out loud. I'll be like, nope, I don't think on that. He'll bring up something from the past. Nope, my father forgave me. He doesn't even remember my sins. In in Psalms, it talks about he he throws your sins so far that they're uh, the east is from the west. And what's interesting is the east and west never meet. North and south meet, but he said east from the as far as the east is from the west, they never meet. Hmm. Little cool stuff it. like that, right? Yeah, I, I absolutely love it. Okay, one last thing here through this process of breaking belief systems within the body of Christ, Christians that are struggling with these things in com- in combination with circumstances of their life story. So you have your life story, which comes with its own beef, comes with its own stuff that we have to deal with, Bible study, through counseling, through marriage counseling, all those things. What doesn't typically get covered within the body of Christ is when we start getting in the realm of money, which 90 plus percent of your decisions are are made from, and on top of not talking about it, there's these belief systems that even crush the opportunity for you to become successful in the body of Christ. And that's what we've been dealing with today. And I'm going to kind of lead you guys to some action steps coming out of this masterclass that we've been having together. So the final part here that I've had Christians use on me, not me personally, maybe sometimes personally, but when I encourage a multiplication mindset to them, for example, I will use the word 10x. How can we 10x what you're doing. How can we 10x your income? How can we 10x your production? Immediately, if I'm talking to a Christian, non-believer, they're like, this is amazing. Like, I I never would have thought of that. I'm like, yeah, even if you fail miserably, if you were thinking 10x and you failed miserably in 3x, that's more than your original goal was. And now you're in a place where you've got way more to cover your cost of living and you can start thinking very, very clearly now. Even if we never 10x, it was the concept of thinking big in multiplication. That's how God's kingdom works. Genesis 128, that formula. There's multiplication in the formula, not necessarily growth. So I always talk about that with them. But I'm immediately head with this word, Travis, called contentment. Mm. Um, And which I understand where they're coming from. I haven't done the best job conveying 
and I'm, I'm wondering if you can help me here, uh, what that truly means to be content in the kingdom, what it doesn't mean when someone tries to use contentment to block, to block their ability to go and do what God blessed them to do. For example, let's say we're dealing with someone that's a math genius and they have an idea that could save people tons of money in the, um, in the green industry. Uh, you know, solar and electricity, and, and if they would put the formulas together and present it to a company and they would pay them millions of dollars to, to work in that organization, but they're sticking to um, being a professor at college, at a college, or they're, or they're staying at this teacher's position knowing that they have an amazing idea that could be worth millions of dollars, but as a Christian, they need to be content mm -hmm. um, with what they have. They have a good job, good career, good marriage, you know, one mortgage, you know, no debt uh, outside of the mortgage and good credit and, you know, savings in the bank and they're tithing 10% and, you know, all this stuff. Yeah, it's great. You don't know this, but I just recorded a video on this topic called uh, uh, Content Versus Satisfied. You got to know the difference. That's coming out soon. Shameless plug. But <laughs> uh, I've got the, I've got the, I've got some of my notes right here um, from this video. It is actually... I was studying it myself because I had some of these questions because there are scriptures that talk about being content. And I wanted to make sure I understood for myself, this is the pattern. I want to make sure I get it for me and then Before. I'm going to go teach it. Yeah. Yeah. So I had questions. I did my own research. I hopped in the word. I studied this stuff out and now I can help you guys because it is a great, this is a great question. I'm so glad you're bringing all these up. So Contentment, here's what it means. I'm, I'm just gonna read it to you if you don't mind, just cause I got yes. it right here. Yeah. It's, it's worded. Contentment as described in the Bible is a state of being satisfied with what one has regardless of the external circumstances. All right, so listen to this part though. It involves an inner peace and satisfaction that comes from trusting God's provision and being grateful for his blessings. Satisfied, and this is important to know both, it refers to the fulfillment of a desire or need. So a contentment is I'm happy and I have inner peace just as we are, just as I am with whatever's going on, uh, with whatever my money's doing, with whatever my job's doing, et cetera, the business. I'm content, I'm happy, I have inner peace, I trust God, I'm good to go. Satisfied is like when the actual external thing happens. But here's the problem, and here's here's why this is important. Contentment is a deeper inner state of being satisfied with what one has, rooted by trusting God's provision. While satisfaction often re refers to the fulfillment of an immediate need or desire, contentment transcends fleeting moments of satisfaction. So you can be satisfied, but it's going to go away. It's temporary. You just Content made your first million. Okay. Yeah. Went it was away. good for a second. It was good for a second, but contentment's like, man, I'm thrilled with my life. Even if I never made the million right now, what's happening is I think people are using that word out of context. So the, the person you just described, he's actually describing a fear and it's more likely a fear of many Christians are very afraid and they have all of these things that what they think pridefulness is. I don't need that. I don't need to make all that money. Why would I do that? I'm happy with what I got here. Great. I'm happy with what I have too. There's nothing wrong with wanting to increase. There is nothing wrong because they're major original marching orders. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. That's grow and expand, subdue and dominate. Okay. That's the original marching orders. If, if the guy in your example really doesn't want to go do that stuff and just, it's not a desire of his heart. Great. But I think most of the people do have that desire for growth, for increase, going to the next level, but I'm afraid of something. I'm afraid if it works, I'll become greedy and evil. I'm yep. afraid if it works, I'll become prideful, selfish, and arrogant. I'm afraid if it works, I might have to work more hours. I might have to have a big old team. I don't want to run a corporation. Now they don't say this stuff, but it's all subconscious. It's what's going on back here. It just manifests itself as, well, I just need to be content. Let me go, let me go throw my Christian excuse so that mm -hmm. you'll back off a little bit and I don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. That's actually most likely what happens in those scenarios. Yeah. And so I, being, I just struggle be with being able to communicate. Uh, when I'm on the call with someone, I kind of don't press initially. Interesting. Okay. So what you're saying is you want to get out of debt and you want to leave wealth behind for your all your kids and your family 
and you want to leave assets behind, but you're trying to do it off this current operating system, this current mindset. And I just don't know how we get there. Like even as a, as a, as a coach, I'm, I'm trying to get you to another level. You're, you're using your, your Christian version of contentment to block us mm -hmm. from having the possibility that you could actually be really good at this. And you would actually through systems and standard operating procedures actually give yourself more time than what you have today uh, yeah. in your life to spend with family because now you've got the resources to do those things. But you're throwing this contentment at me and, and that's just some, sometimes I get real blocked up on that. I'm like, I just yeah. gotta stay quiet. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and that's really what it is. It's like, okay, Mr. Client, what are you really afraid of? And just let them talk, see what they say. Because it's something, like, what you're trying to do, you know this, but you're trying to get to the real root of what's actually happening here. Right. Because that him him just being I got to be content. He hasn't lived that out for every step of his life. If he's a professor at a college or whatever his his job is, he had a position before that. Hey, we want to promote you to manager. Oh, no, I just need to be content. Hey, uh, we want to have your wife's like, hey, I want to have another kid. No, I need to be discontent with the one I got. It's like, no, you don't operate that way. So there's obviously something else that's blocking you right now. Mm -hmm. What are you really afraid of? Yeah, and I can I can speak just for myself. Like I'm at a point now where I'm getting I'm getting to a point where I have to consider: Do I want to scale team of people that I have around me? Do I want to multiply this channel? Is this what I truly desire? And I'm you know wrestling back and forth with 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 God on it. My my I'm talking to God. I'm not wrestling with God. I'm just talking to God on. Hey, do you need me to, you know, keep working in this area? Are you trying to push me into this opportunity here that could just blow my business up in the next, you know, couple months? What are you doing? All right, I'm someone that needs to kind of just have the plan, and I'm and I'm a, I'm a soldier. I just go and do it. Uh, but when someone, you know, you start asking me to think and dream to this to the degree that I know God can have me. A dream and or the visions that he gives me and it creates a fear of success so I know there's clients that I work with it where we experience the same thing where it's like oh yeah you you're, you're fearing that you actually could win big uh, and help a lot of people that's what you really fear it's not losing I actually don't fear losing anymore because I've already been to what losing looks like so I'm like you know th th that's what I know but what I don't know is winning at the yeah. highest level and that's even scarier than taking five steps back, conserving, spending less, going out less. It's like, that doesn't even hurt me. But it's winning at the highest level and eating at the highest places and meeting with the highest people in certain places. That's the real, real scary stuff. And I think a lot of people watching, Christians especially, where it's like, you're just staying in the pews. Instead of getting on stage, instead of building your platform, instead of spreading the good news mm -hmm. at a level of scale, leveraging technology and leveraging resources that allow us to do that today at speeds of which we've never seen before. You know, like it, it, that's there for us. So I want to really start to wrap this because we, we, we went so deep and I want to send people into a, a, a place where they can say, all right, he gave us the, the general 50,000 overview here. I want to be able to like I just need to start with operating in God's kingdom or, okay, I get that, but I'm like, I'm struggling with the winning here part, or I'm struggling with the master. You know, I, I, I say I serve one master, but it's really, you know, it's two sometimes and, you know, for certain things. And it's like, I'm compromising my values to achieve a certain uh, result, whatever that may be. What, if you could talk to my audience on primarily what you're doing on your YouTube channel and the increased method that you mentioned earlier, and really how someone can can go about learning more and diving into a community of people of like-minded kingdom folks like-minded in their faith like-minded in, in unlocking belief systems or i should say original belief systems that have been blocked by false cultural belief systems mm -hmm. that prevent you from rediscovering the kingdom and rediscovering your original identity that's a, a lot of language i've been trying to really be intentional with where it's like no i'm not i'm not being a new thing i'm actually going back to what was originally intended for me and it feels new obviously because i've never yes. experienced this but i'm rediscovering identity kingdom definitions it's it's all about re recovering right uh regaining what's what's yours you never really lost it right yeah. it, it, god god jesus thousands of years ago 
already claimed it for you. And now we're living in a time where we get to benefit all those works from the from the previous our previous lines, right? So if you can talk to us about that and, and we're, what's our next move, what's our next action step? So really what I'm doing is the increased life is I'm showing you who you really are in Christ. You may have heard that before. You know, who, you, who are you in Christ? Well, he's actually, like we've talked about already, he's equipped us with everything we need to win at life. And I'm just showing you guys how to actually do it. There's a lot of times where, you know, we get in the word and it maybe it, you read the words and I'm not quite sure how it applies in real life. Like, I think I get it, but I don't know if I get it. I'm helping people, I'm helping people apply this, these principles, these precepts, these I kind of look at them like step-by-step -step frameworks man, apply these in your life. That's what we do in the YouTube channel is I've got so many stories and all my entrepreneurial adventures and coaching and all that stuff, uh, plus my own life experiences. And I can show you guys exactly how to extract these success principles from the word and apply them to your life so that you can get the results that God has for you. Because ultimately we were put on this planet for a purpose. Very few people are doing the purpose because of money and all the things that go with it. So what I help people do is I help them get in their thing, get moving on it and start experiencing what we call the increased life. So we've got the Increase Warrior Coaching Program. It's a membership site and we've got an awesome kingdom community. We go live in there, we train in there. We have a framework called the Increase Method and it's designed around the five main categories of life, your faith, finances, family, fulfillment, and fitness. And so we just help you design your day in a way that makes increase automatic in all those areas. And then we meet up a couple times a week on Zoom and we hold each other accountable and we make sure everybody's taking steps. We got coaches to help you look over stuff if you need that. And it's a ton of fun. The results, the testimonies are off the charts. Produce of this program is even shocking to myself. Um, not to be, not to sound like over the top with it, but I just give God the credit for it. We just show up, people follow the frameworks. We encourage them, hold them accountable, answer questions, help them with some blocks they might have and yep. just get them rolling, get them moving. And it's been a ton of fun. That's pretty awesome. And, and I myself, uh, I've been following you for a while and then I joined inside your community. And one of the things I will say, it's very clean when you click on the different um, topics and formats and areas that you're like, okay, I'm struggling in fitness. Or I'm struggling in my faith. I'm struggling in finances. Most of my audience and clients, you're really spending a lot of time on your finances. I believe that this is a great addition where again, what, what I bring to the table primarily is really, I'm, I'm on like the, the logical part here. And you guys know this where it's like, Hey, you know, your numbers, what are your numbers? Let's learn a strategy. Let's stack those habits. Let's stack good habits over that strategy to protect your numbers. And then it's action and accountability. And it's like, you go out and do it and it's rinse, lather, repeat. And, mm -hmm. and as I've matured as a coach, as a uh, counselor, consultant, all these different titles, whatever you want to call me, guru, whatever it is, I'm, I'm now really bringing this mindset piece and recognizing that this is really where I've had a lot of my success in how my own finances were able to operate, how I've ap operated this YouTube channel, how I make great relationships with other content creators, even like yourself. And what gets me in rooms that I don't even belong in, in the first place, which is just always blows my mind. Uh, and just being, hey, if Travis says no, I'm content. If he says yes, I'm content. If, if Travis wants to do another uh, live stream, I'm content if it only gets 20 views. I'm content if it gets 20,000 views. So I'm, I'm always in this mindset of like, I don't really set too high of, of expectation. Obviously I'm gonna do my best and I'm sure he's gonna do his best and it's gonna be valuable, but I'm content w whatever what happens, right? I'm, I'm happy yeah. in that, but I don't allow this idea of contentment to block the satisfaction or desire of a result that I'm looking for mm -hmm. because of some fear. And even when I experience fear, I, I address it. I let people know, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm scared of this right now, but it's only because I never did it. And once I do it, I'm not going to be scared of it no more. It's like trying broccoli for the first time. I, 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 so many years and never touched broccoli. I'm starting to eat it at 28 years old now. I'm like, you know, it's really not all that bad. You throw a little butter. Not that bad. You know, it's not <laughs> terrible. You know, carrots. I'm like trying different foods now. Avocados. I, I've been, I can't believe how, how many years I've been missing avocados I, yeah. I did not touch that thing and you know i meet my fiance she's avocado she loves avocados and i'm like one day ooh, a little salt 
wow, change your life. Put it on chicken, yep. put it on rice, whatever you want. Amazing. So it's like in business, it works the same way. There's 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 going to be like fears that happen or in your finances, there's these things that are going to occur. And having a coach, I'll wrap it up with this. Having a coach, someone that's been there or knows the telltale signs of how you react and how you speak is such a fast track. And I'm pretty sure you can attest to this being a coach for so many years now. I'm just now like witnessing things that I've said years ago and how my client held on to that and I forgot about it. And they're like, no, you said this to me. And it was like, wow, I, I, it's just regular conversation. But when, when you have someone that can say something to you from a place of authority and confidence, a boost that is, it is yeah. awesome to, you know, that recognition that, hey, you're good at that. I give you permission to go take that over and have dominion over that. Sometimes we need a little permission, a little push right to say yes you're you're thinking in the right way you're doing something you're on to something you're about to you're about to score big here pack your have your bags ready cuz it's coming right you're going to have to fill these bags up so get as many as you can i had a i had a my my spiritual father uh, uh someone i've been talking with for a year on a on a monthly basis and he recently told me he was like denzel i've been i've been praying and you came up and and my message to you is is prepare your bags get as many bags as you can because it's coming and i was like interesting you say that because i have this unique partnership with a youtube channel that's 10x my 20x my size or something like that they've got over 1 million subscribers and they want me on their channel to, to talk about a particular thing and serve in a particular area and i'm like interesting timing there so yeah. i want to wow. thank you for spending over an hour and a half with me this is awesome for our first collaboration my audience will eat this up especially my clients they literally watch through this whole thing and i give them a trophy at the end <laughs> for hanging in there nice. <laughs> so I like that. thank you again for spending yeah. time with us as we close out can you just let us know the name of your channel, how do we get a hold of you, how do we reach out, that sort of thing. And Thanks for having me. I had a blast. I can, I can talk about this stuff forever, and I plan to. <laughs> That's my plan. Um, you can go to increaseministries.com, and you can see all the stuff that we've got going on over there. That'll give you access. You'll see uh, my YouTube channel. If you just want to search Travis Peters, that's where I'm the most active. And uh, really, you can reach out to me in any of the platforms, any of the socials. Travis Peters. I'm sure we'll do some links in the description or something, but yeah, that's the best way. Yeah. And he reads his comments. I like that. I really I do, do appreciate that. He reads his comments. I can always see him replying to people commenting. So if you want to go on his channel, check out some stuff, drop a comment. He responds. I don't know how quickly, but I've seen it. Like it's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I always respect that because that's a task in and of itself. So I always respect that tremendously. So thank you again, Travis. Appreciate appreciate it. It. God bless you all. We'll be talking again soon.